Now, Action Jackson, Dan the Man here. Now, I hope you are having a great time and we have an amazing Sunday ready for you right now. So, we have right now some praise and worship. So, get ready, be standing, get ready to we'll praise. But before we do that, as you stand up, Ooh. we are going to do some warm ups. is a praise squat. Woo! So how we do the praise squat, hands like this. And we just left, right, and we do a dip. Left, right, dip. That's the praise squat, or the prayer squat, Walking sorry. The prayer squat. squat, not praise. Walking it's prayer all man. praise right. and prayer. That is the prayer squat. Next one is this, sometimes we just walk and pray. Oh, walk. So this one is the walk and pray. Walk Come around on. the walls. Just walk, walk, just walk, walk on the spot. You just walk on the spot, just like this. Now the Very next one is exactly. praise him and bow down. Woo. Oh, and praise him and bow down. Woo. So there we have, we got four moves that we're not gonna mix it up too much today. We're gonna introduce more moves as we go along. Ooh, okay, I'm are you ready? More than that. I'm ready, I'm ready. Here we go. Number one. <laughs> <laughs> and praise him. Ooh. And bow down. Ooh. And praise him. Ooh. And bow down. Ooh. And praise him and bow down. 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 And stop. And pray. Pray and walk. Oh, walking. I'm walking and praying. And walk. And pray. And walk. And pray. And walk. And pray. We're going to get into a squat now. Here we go. Ready? Prayer squats and. Prayer squat. Oh. Prayer squat. Oh, man. Prayer squat. It's been a long day. Two more. Oh, yeah. Feel the burn. And just walk it out again. Oh, walk it out. Walk and pray. And praise him. And bow down. And praise him. And pray. Press squat. Press squat. And press squat. And press squat. And praise him. And bow down. And stop. Ooh. You're doing great. We are ready. Let's okay. jump into some praise and worship now. You are above every other. Your love amazes me. You created every beautiful color for everyone to see. I want the world to know. I want my life to show just what your love has done for me. Praise God, cause only you deserve it I want the world to know, I want my life to show Just what your love has done for me
kids. We hope that you've had an incredible time of worship. I love worship so much. We have a ton of fun and we're pretty goofy, but we take worship seriously and so can you. Spending time in worship every day is an amazing habit to form. I bet you can. Hey, Dan the Man, what do we have going on next? Currently, okay, you may have heard of this thing going around. It's a virus. <laughs> COVID. We're going to do the COVID challenge, okay? So COVID. We, COVID. COVID. So you can avoid contact. <laughs> social distancing. <laughs> All right, this is how we do it. In three greetings. Greeting number one. All right. So instead of hugging, if you're a if you're a hugging kind of child and you just you love a hug. Oh, oh I love hugs. So instead of hugging, this is how we hug. Hey! hey! Oh, oh, bro, bro, bro. Bro. So oh, that is good. the covoid hug. Now the next one is the covoid fist pump. Ooh, you ready? Hey, what's hey, up, bro? What's up? Hey, dude? What's up? Oh, oh man. That actually hurts. Ooh, uh, it I, I stings. I wouldn't do that one. Yeah. Now, for the final greeting, okay, during COVID. So, instead of the COVID hug, the COVID knuckles, there is the COVID. The COVID high five. Okay. So, for the final one, it is the COVID high five. Hey, what's hey! up, baby? Hey! Woo! That was a good one. So we are, that is during the COVID COVID time. So you can avoid one another because you don't want to touch people, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, James. Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> hey, guys, what time is it? It's cooking time! Today, we are going to be cooking, we're making bacon! Yeah, bacon! Oh, yeah! I love bacon. Show them this bacon real quick. Can you Salty, show them that bacon? delicious I mean, bacon. that is like some serious bacon. Let's slow mo that. Here we go. Alright, bacon and... Not orange juice. Not orange juice. <laughs> it is egg. Eggs. Bacon and eggs. Yum. So what you need is uh, eggs and bacon. What do you need? Eggs and bacon. bacon. <laughs> bacon and eggs. Bacon, eggs, bacon, bacon, eggs, bacon, eggs, eggs, bacon, bacon, eggs, 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 bacon, eggs,
smoked. Mmm, the smoked bacon. Wow. Next Question. Up. Go ahead. Sweet or salty? Sweet. Children at home, do you prefer sweet or salty? Salty! They love sweet! I wasn't sure what you were talking about. Like sweet or salty well, bacon? Sweet or salty? It could Food. Be chips or chocolate? Chips. Mm. Jam or peanut butter? You can't have one without the other. All right. Now, just a tip. If you want super crispy bacon, sometimes you can start on a skillet, put it on a pan and in the oven to crisp up nicely. Oh, mm -mm. we don't have an oven though. Nope. Because this is the studio. Ow, this is getting fatty. The fat is spitting everywhere. Hey Dave, what's your favorite breakfast? Bacon and egg. Yeah! <laughs> We're making Dave's face. We're making Dave's face. We're making Dave's face. This is good. Scrambled eggs, take one. Oh. <laughs> Ma'am. Good eggs? That is amazing. A little salt and pepper, a little cheese. Add a little mix in with your eggs, you'll be good to go. Hey, actually, Jackson, yeah. are they excellent? They're, they're, they're definitely excellent. Are they exciting? It's very exciting. <laughs> bacon! 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 Hey guys. What? How does bacon dance? Alright kids, Ooh. now is the time to try what we have cooked. Oh man, this bacon, look how much bacon that is. We can probably feed your whole family. Here we go. Let's try the bacon together, okay? You ready? Mm-hmm. Hey guys. Hey Dave. Hey. Bacon beatbox challenge. Go. <gasps> Here we are in the studio, making our bacon, yo, we <laughs> One, two, ah. Man. Mmm. Mmm. Let's get a close up of that, move in. Zoom. Let's try this delicious, crunchy bacon. Mmm. Hey, what about me? Oh, here you go, Dan. Mm. Boom. Take a piece for yourself, Dave. Mm. What? Wait. Um. I said take a piece. <laughs> now is the time where we get to play a game. <laughs> Are you ready to play a game? Alrighty. Everybody, stand up. Run in place. Do a few jumping jacks, get the blood flowing, and let's have some fun. Hey guys. Hey Dave. The floor is lava. Oh no, the floor is lava! Ah, woo. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. All right kids, for the next 30 seconds, we want you to play the floor is lava. So, one person, point to the person right now, point to them. Okay, that person is gonna call out the floor is lava, and then you have to get onto something that's not the floor, okay? And if you don't get onto something in three seconds, then you're out. On your mark, get set, person! Go! The floor is lava! I'm trying to get on the floor! Oh, who got up? Who stayed down? I melted into the fire earlier when Dan the man jumped onto the stool. All right, let's try it one more time. Okay, hey person! Hey, leader, are you ready to call out the floor is lava? Okay, call it out in three, two, one. The floor, floor is lava! lava. <laughs> I can't jump like him, but I'm up! <laughs> All right, one last time. If you're 
still in, say, I'm in. Awesome, last round. Person who's gonna call out the floor is lobby. Are you ready? Awesome, in three, two, one, the floor is lava! Hey kids, it's Nat here. I'm super excited to be back with you for story time this week. Who can remember what we spoke about last week? Remember, I told you the story about when I was in elementary school and it was picture day and I painted when I wasn't supposed to. Then we talked about the story in Luke chapter 11. You know, the parable of the lost son. I'll quickly remind you, one son comes to dad, gets a stack of his inheritance, goes off, spends it all. It does not go well. He ends up sleeping with pigs, having to come home and begging for his father's forgiveness. But the thing is, the amazing part of the story was his dad opened out his arms, just like my mum did when I did the wrong thing too, and took him in and gave him his forgiveness. You know, like all good stories, this one has a sequel, a part two, and I can't wait to share it with you. But before we get into that, I wanted to ask you guys a couple of questions. So who's been in school and they're the only one doing the right thing and all of their classmates are not making good choices and the class is going crazy and the teacher stands up and tells everyone off, including you. Don't you just hate that? And it feels so unfair. Has that happened to you before? Has it made you mad? Have any of you guys had a friend over and you've been playing with something and that friend has broken something that's really important to you. Maybe your favourite toy or something in your room and it's made you really mad. Have any of you guys worked really hard on a school project or test or practised really hard for something and then one of your friends maybe hasn't put in as much work or hasn't done the right thing? And, you know, you submit your assignment or your project and you get your mark back and they get a better mark than you. You know, sometimes stuff like that makes me really mad or it just doesn't seem fair. You know, in this story that we spoke about last week, the father actually had two sons. The first son, who we chatted about previously, grabbed his inheritance, went against what his father wanted him to do and went away and spent all of his money. The second son, he was a really, really good kid. And he's the second character in this story that I want to talk to you about today. You know, this second son stayed on the father's land. He worked for his father. He worked on the property. He farmed with him. He was a good, faithful son that did everything that his father could have asked for him. You know, he was just a really, really good kid. I want you to imagine for a moment that you're that second son. You know, when the first son came home and he begged for his father's forgiveness, do you know what the father did? He said, let's have a party. I am so happy you are home. Imagine you're the second son in this story. You go to your dad and you say, hey, dad, like, what is up? Why can I hear music and a massive party? Why is my brother getting, you know, his favourite meal cooked for dinner? What is going on? You'd be feeling pretty mad, right? You'd be like, hang on a minute. Dad, I've done everything you've asked. I've been a good kid. I've done everything you could have ever possibly wanted for me to do. My brother has done the wrong thing. He comes home. Not only do you forgive him, but you put on a massive party for him and you give him everything that we have. Man, I know that I would be pretty mad too. But what's incredible about this story is we just see the father say, you are always welcome to everything that I have. It's yours. Come and join the party. I'm celebrating because my son has returned home. I'm going to read to you this part from the Bible. So we're in Luke chapter 11 and we get to this point where the son has come home and his father goes, do you know what? Go, let's create a party for him. So in verse 25, it talks about the other son being in the field. And it says, meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called out to one of the servants and asked them what was going on. Your brother has come home, they replied, and your father has killed 
the best meat and he's putting on a party for him. The older brother became so angry and he refused to go into the party. He looked to his father and he said, all of these years I've been slaving for you and I've never disobeyed anything you've said to me, Dad. I've been a really, really good kid, yet you've never given me your best meat. You've never put on a party with me to celebrate with my friends. But when this son, when my brother comes home, you've put, you've cleaned up your property, you've ignored everything he's done and you've given him the best party ever. And in verse 31, and this is what's so incredible about this story, the son says, you know what? You are always, always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and now he is alive again. He was lost and now he is found. You know, this story is about forgiveness and this part of the story is about forgiveness too. And the bottom line is, guys, everyone needs to experience the joy that comes with forgiveness. It's not easy sometimes. It's not easy when you're the kid that's done everything right and you still have to choose to forgive. It's not easy when you watch your parents celebrate one of your siblings or your brother and give them the best party ever and you're here going, hey, what about me? But you know, God forgave us. Jesus is trying to teach us here about forgiveness. And I want to let you know, know today that when you actually forgive, you experience an incredible joy. Everyone deserves forgiveness and each one of you each one of you is called to forgive, just as our Heavenly Father forgave us. So I think that's a pretty cool end part to this story. It's a pretty cool sequel. You know, wherever you are this week, I'm believing that you guys are going to have a heart ready to forgive because we forgive because we've been forgiven. I want you guys to pray with me. I'm going to put the words up on the screen and I want you to pray just out loud wherever you are. Dear Lord, thank you for always loving me. Thank you, Lord, for showing me forgiveness. Lord, please help me this week as I go about my day to forgive and love others just as you have forgiven me. Amen. Man, what a, what a Sunday. Absolutely. We've had a blast. I had an incredible time. Wow. So how about that story today? That Round two. Good. So good. Passing that is amazing. Mm. Thank you so much for sharing with us today. It's round two of the prodigal son. Can I interject a testimony? Please. Someone heard that story in Australia. So one of the pastor's children mm. then heard the story from watching the video last week. Two days later, then went to his mum and said, Hey, mum, I've actually... Um, just like your, because Pastor Nat talked about painting and then going to the mum asking for forgiveness. So this pastor's uh, son that came to the mum and said, hey, I'm so sorry, I lied and I did that. And I said I didn't do it, but I did. Wow. Wow. That's incredible. So if you can share your stories with us, that would be amazing. That is so here as well. That but is it. That's it. So this week's story, what's it about? It's, it's about the prodigal son still. It's part B. Mm -hmm. But it's from the other, it's from the brother's perspective. Yep. It's from the older brother's perspective. And what happens is we, we love the story about the son who goes away and he, yeah. and, he, and he throws away his life basically and gives up everything that his father gave him. Yep. Um, and a big word, he squandered it, which means he just didn't take care of it. He lost it all. And he came home and the father forgave him. He welcomed him home. And through a party. Now that's a great story. Yeah. But there was a brother who didn't leave, mm. who did everything he could to obey his dad. He was a hard worker, and he didn't take his he didn't take the money early. And he had to watch his dad forgive his brother. And he didn't think that was fair. And maybe you've seen something that's just not fair. Maybe somebody did something to you and you your feelings were hurt or um, they did something and you just thought it wasn't fair and so you thought that they should get in trouble. And that's what the older brother thought. That's a tough position to be in, right? That is so tough to be in. And it's like that, it's like not forgiving someone 
but then there's this party. Yeah. So it's like this party in the story where the dad is celebrating with everyone. Yeah. And they've got a big feast, all that food, and the big musicians, and there's a celebration, and then there's the brother. Yeah, grumpy brother. You know what? And you think he's exaggerating, but right here in Luke 15, verse 28, the older brother got angry and he refused to go in. Imagine what he was missing out on, all because he was mad. So picture there's a birthday party happening. Mm -hmm. Imagine your best friend yeah. or your sibling and it's their party and it's inside and you're outside, but you're grumpy. Yeah. You're just grumpy because someone did something. I don't like Tommy because Tommy, he looked at me funny and I'm not going in there because Tommy, he did something wrong. Yeah. And the story talks about, hey, forgive, come inside, be like the father and just come and celebrate. Yeah, absolutely. And God's there going, just come and celebrate. Yeah. Don't sit, don't be, mm, just enter in and have a party. Absolutely. And and this, this can apply to you being very young, but it applies to me too. As a grown-up, yeah. we miss out on so many opportunities because we feel hurt mm. or we feel offended or somebody did something and here's the big word right here. We think somebody deserves it. The older brother thought that the younger brother deserved the father to be mad at him. Mm. And sometimes we miss out on things because we think we're right. Some of us think, wow, the older brother is right. The, the father should have got mad at the son and should have punished their son. But this is an expression of true love and the love of the father, the love of your heavenly father. God is trying, Jesus is telling a story here and Jesus is saying, this is what my father's like. This is what forgiveness is like. And this is what it looks like for true love to, to take over when somebody does something wrong. And gosh, I just, this is making me feel so good. And I'm learning so much from it right now. Definitely. So the bottom line is this, Jesus put other people first. So we challenge you in one way or another, put other people first this week. This week's memory verse comes from Philippians 2 verse 3. Don't do anything only to get ahead. Don't do it because you are proud. Instead, be humble. Value others more than yourselves. Awesome. So right now we're going to hear from one of our teachers in the elementary school. Her name is Miss Lita and she is a great Lita. <laughs> she really is though. She's one of my favorite people ever. So check it out. Here's Miss Lita. Hi kids. Uh, Tom and family uh, here. We just want you guys to know we love you guys so much and we really miss you. We can't wait to see you guys and give you guys really big hugs. We hope you guys are really enjoying your family time and we can't wait to see you soon. So you guys have a great day. Bye bye guys. Bye. We have had an amazing epic Sunday today. We had some great teaching. We had a ton of fun. We hope you enjoyed the games and the challenges. Um, but Dan, could you just close some prayers with this uh, epic Sunday? We would love to. All right, let's pray. Father God, we thank you so much. We thank you for everything you've blessed us with. But God, we thank you for the example that you gave us, that you gave everything to us. You laid your life down for us. You put others first all the time. And so Father, we pray that we can learn from that and that we, tomorrow, this week, can just learn to put others first in all the things that we do. But God, we give thanks and we pray for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.